Hi, my name is Lydia Owade and I am the owner of Cakes by LA. Cakes by LA is a bakery located in Abuja, Nigeria. And thank you for joining me in this online tutorial. I'll be teaching you how to make some of my um, chocolate decorations. We'll be making balls, we'll be making sails, we'll be making flowers and um, feathers in this online video. We will be starting this class with how to make chocolate sails and chocolate balls. So first of all, I would like to take you through some of my tools and um, some of the things we'll be needing to make balls and sails. In this mold, I have the smaller balls. We'll be using these um, cavities to form the smaller balls and of course here i have my slip mats which we will be using to make the chocolate sales later on i have parchment paper i have scissors i have my pegs my um my spatula my brush i have um, piping bags and i have about um, i think three cake boards here i have my bowl which i'm going to be using to melt my chocolate so um here i have my block of chocolate it's a compound white chocolate which we will be using however i have chopped it up and um, kept them inside this bucket so there's no need to go through the rigors of that so when i need to use i just fetch from this bucket and into my bowl and i melt so here i also have my gold dust because we'll be making gold balls and gold sails and right behind me i have my microwave if you're not comfortable with using the microwave you know you can always use a double boiler to melt your chocolate but you have to be careful though because any little amount of water that gets in your chocolate is going to make it seize and you don't want that i prefer to use compound chocolates because i don't have to bother about tempering at all so the brand that i find um, ideal a uh, vision that's vision make sure it's compound though vision compound chocolate and uh, some of my students in the past have also tried leborn and uh, they testify that it's nice and good as well this brand that i have here on the table is called um, cacao ivory so whichever brand of chocolate that's readily available to you but you know you have to make sure it is compound right or if you prefer the coverture then you have to make sure you temper before you start any of this decoration chocolate chocolates are very very sensitive to work with whatever bowl you're using you have to make sure it's completely dry without any water in it my spatula as well is completely dry there's no form of water it's not wet at all so i'm going to be melting them in the uh, microwave and when you're working with chocolate you have to be careful you can't leave your chocolate in the microwave melting unattended to you have to literally babysit it and every 20 seconds even though even if you feel the chocolate is hasn't um, started melting yet every 20 seconds you have to stop the microwave bring it out and mix it with a spatula until it's totally melted So I'm going to pause, bring it out, and turn it around. So I'm going to stop it and check on the progress. So even when it feels like it's not, um, even when it feels like it's not melting at all, you just have to stop it and turn it before you continue. So it's starting to melt. I'll put it back for another 20 seconds. So at some point, your chocolate will be melt, um, sorry, at some point, your chocolate will be hot enough to melt 
the few lumps that um, we still have in it. So if you just keep turning with your spatula, in no time it will all be melted without having to put it back in the microwave. That aside, while I quickly work on um, my mold. So to make it um, gold, to make it come out perfect, I have this brush dedicated to painting um, gold on either my slip mat or my ball mold, right? And here I have my dry gold dust. You don't have to mix it with anything. Just make sure you get a very good quality dust when you're doing this so that your balls can um, come out nice and shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust this on into each of the cavities, depending on how many um, balls you need to make, but two of these will give you one ball because we are still going to join it together later. So while dusting, I have to make sure I dust the edges and everything well. If you do a very good job at this stage, then by the time it's time to remove and join your your ball you don't you don't have to um, really do much because they, they're going to come out looking nice and perfect so while you're dusting it's important very crucial you have to make sure you do a good job on the edges you have to make sure you dust them nicely as well not just um, the inside and don't be afraid to exceed inside the cavity it's absolutely okay so I'm just making sure I get the gold to the um, corners of my mold. We will see the results when I remove them. Okay, so they are nicely painted and all ready to go in all i have six seven eight so that's going to give me four balls right so i'm just going to set this aside and proceed with my mat my silicone mat so i'm just going to do the same to my silicone mat and if you notice i have a board underneath each of my mold because you need the board for some form of um, reinforcement right you know because you're working with silicone so you don't want to you don't want it wobbly when you pour your chocolate so it's essential you put a board underneath so for the sale we use the mats now people often ask can i use a parchment paper i will not advise a parchment paper it's better you get a slip mat a silicone mat something like this if you're in nigeria you can find this in practically any cake store or you check with um, either everything cakes on instagram or baker's atelier Right, so I'm just going to do the same, the same um, thing I did for my ball mold to the mat. I make sure I paint in the gold and I make sure everywhere is nicely covered. It depends on how big you want to get your seal to. That's what determines um, how well you, you cover your mat in gold. If you want a very big and giant seal, then I can like, probably do this big. So also everything, um, practically everything we are using for this class, you will find with um, Ida, Daspat Cam, Everything Cakes, or Baker's Atelier. And of course, you can also find Vision Compound Chocolate with um, Bakery Supply NG, the sell Vision product. Okay, so that's also nicely painted and of course you know you have to paint a little to exceed whatever size of sale that you have in mind right so i think i'm satisfied with the result of that and this is how it looks okay so just going over it again to make sure everywhere is nicely covered in gold dust and I don't have any faint or any transparent looking area okay 
so like I said, you just find one brush to dedicate to this because it's going to just um, sort of damage the brush and it's not going to be useful for any other thing apart from this. Okay, so I'm going to start with my balls. So for this ball, you, need, um, you also need a parchment paper, something big enough to cover the surface of, of your mold. So I'm going to cut that down with um, a scissors. Okay. So right about now, I'll also still give my chocolate a good mix before pouring it in the, in the cavities, just to make sure it's not, uh, it has not become hard or too thick for me to work with. And if you find it too thick, by the time you're ready to work, you can put it back in the microwave and melt it for a few seconds. Okay. So that's nice and ready to go and I'm just going to, well, I'm literally not going to fill this with chocolate. I'm just going to pour like, um, let's say quarter, quarter way into the, into the cavity. Okay. Okay, so that's sort of enough. I c you can sort of lift it up to make sure the chocolate settles in. So after tapping it down, I'm just going to use this small palette knife to make sure my chocolate gets to the edges of the mold. So I'm just pulling it upwards. right so when you're doing this just uh, try as much as possible to be careful and don't let your palette knife touch the areas that you have painted gold okay So almost done with that. Okay, so and that's it for now. Okay, so when I'm, once I'm done doing that, I'm going to put a parchment paper over it like this. Move it carefully to my worktop because I need the board to flip it over. So you put the parchment paper and turn the board upside down, lift it up carefully and turn it to the other side right like this so after turning it you sort of tap your board on your work top so this will let the excess chocolate fall fall off on the um, parchment paper so you have to make sure you tap okay so that's fine and I'm just going to set this aside while I work on my seal. So now for the chocolate seal, I go back to my remaining chocolate and mix it before I pour, right? So you just um, pour some on the mat. Then first of all, tap it. 
to make sure you get rid of any air bubbles, right? After tapping it, you can move it around until it becomes as, um, as big as you want it to be, as, as big as you want your seal to be. Move your chocolate around. So if you see that it's becoming faint when you're moving it around, you can pause and add a little more chocolate to it. Okay. So I think I, I want it bigger, so I'm going to add some more chocolate. It doesn't have to be a perfect round. Of course, remember every seal is different. The one you you will do today can't be the same as the one you do yes um sorry, as the one you do tomorrow. So each one, each time with its own beauty and uniqueness. Okay, so I've moved that around nicely and I think it's big enough, right? So I tap it on the um, board once again and then I take my pegs, maybe two or three is enough. Pinch my mats randomly. Put a peg on it, pinch it on the other side like this. So you're just trying to, I'm just trying to create random folds. That's what gives the seal its um, curviness. Okay, so I think I'm pretty satisfied with how that looks. So immediately I'm going to put this in the fridge. You can either put it in the fridge or freezer depending on how fast you want to get the result if you're working and you're in a hurry you can just toss it in the freezer for a few minutes less than five minutes and it's going to be ready so i'm placing these two um, things that i have made in the freezer for five minutes okay so when you want to remove it i prefer to leave my pegs on because what happens if i remove my peg is the mat will try to expand and it can break the seal off easily so i'm just going to um, put my hand underneath put one hand underneath and one hand on the mat and try to remove even with the pegs still on so literally i'm putting my hand on the strongest part of the chocolate which is um, this area that's i'm putting my hand underneath that um, place so i um, i try to remove it carefully little by little easy does it and of course even if it breaks i mean it's it's not a problem because you can always put in two piece on your cake it's fine so don't beat yourself up over it okay so i'm almost done just um, flip it over and carefully You have to be extra careful of the curvy part. Okay, and there you go. Nice. So obviously, make sure you use good quality of um, gold dust because that also determines, or, or of course, it goes a long way on how shiny your seal is going to be. So gold highlighter is fine and best for this. So yeah, of course I can then take off my pegs and set it aside. So the same thing with the ball. See, it's quite hard. So that means it's fine and it has set. So I turn it upside down and see what is going on here. So we have the excess falling off to form a shell on top of the um, mold. That is very needed and essential when you want to join your balls together. So um, you have a nice and full ball. So you just pull that out and see how perfect that looks. If I, if I didn't dust my cavity well, then you start seeing patches all around it, right? But this looks nice and perfect. So I'm just going to put them on a parchment until I'm ready to assemble them
And another important thing when you're working with chocolate is make sure you don't work in a warm room. Make sure you work in an air-conditioned room. The room has to be um, has to be cold. It shouldn't be warm because, of course, when it's warm, it can start um, melting your chocolate. And here I have my perfect balls, right? So we're going to pick these two together and join it to form one ball later on. So as you can see here, I have my hot plate and I have this um, pan over it. So I'm quickly going to turn it on and let it become hot. But of course, you don't want to get it too hot. You don't want to get it way too hot. Just about hot enough to join the two balls together. Right? So it's coming up. I'm just going to leave this on top and wait for like half a minute. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off and leave the pan on the hot plate, but I've turned it off. Right, so to start, you pick two balls, of course, and you make sure you are as fast as possible. Look at the edges here. I have to make sure that is gone before I stick my two balls together. So I'm dropping it in the pan, dropping both balls at the same time. Just take it around a little, pick it up and stick it together. Okay, so that is one. I'm going to repeat the same thing with all the balls, both the big one and the small one. Okay. So if you walk, if you are walking and after a while you notice that your whatever you're using is not hot or warm anymore, you can turn it on again and heat it up. Right. Okay. So after a while, of course, we'll have excess of chocolates. You can just use your spatula to to um sort of remove it so it doesn't add excess and unwanted chocolate on your balls right okay i'm going to turn on for, turn it on for like 10 more seconds to eat up a little more and uh, that's fine i'm turning it off again you can do this on your gas cooker on your stove. Okay, so same thing with the smaller ones. So it's so nice easy and straightforward. I'm just going to repeat the same process until I'm done with all the balls. The 
So here I have all my balls. I've joined them together. And uh, there, there was this uh, particular design I posted on Instagram the other day that I did. Um, I attached some balls together and uh, it's part of the pictures that I used to advertise this class. So if you want to do that, I will show you how. You first of all assemble your balls, of course, like we have done here. I have the bigger ones and I have the smaller ones. But when I'm doing this, I usually um, assemble it straight on my cake, you understand? And um, a buttercream cake is always better or more ideal if you're trying to pull this off, right? To be able to do this, you will need a parchment paper. Of course, if you're not, it's advised that you do it directly on your cake so that you don't have to bother about the stress of lifting it and transferring it on the cake. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be assembling on a parchment paper. So here I have my melted chocolate in piping bag. I have my balls ready to go and I have my um, ice spray. In no particular order, of course, it depends on the design you're, you're going for. But first of all, I'm going to pipe some chocolate on the parchment paper to stick my first set of balls, right? So I'm starting, of course, with the bigger ones. I want to make sure I stick that first. And of course, it's important to use a parchment if you are not assembling straight on your on your cake so that you'll be able to peel it off and lift it on your cake when you're ready. So I'm just attaching each of the balls and spraying the, the instant freeze. So I have three balls um, attached to the parchment paper already and now I'm going to start building. So next I'm going to have a bigger, also a big ball and it's going to be attached to these two lower ones. So, so also when I'm working with the chocolate balls, I, I always avoid showing the joining. So in this case, if I'm going to attach it, it's going to be, this will be my view. You can't really see where the joining is, except you go to the back. Okay. So I'm putting another of the bigger one right here so it's going to be here and here okay so pretty much you just keep building until it's tall enough so now i think it's time to attach the smaller ones i'll attach one just by this angle here Right. Stick it. Nice. Mm, my next one can be somewhere here. There's no particular rule to to doing this, I mean, just keep building until you're satisfied with, with the result. Oops. Okay, so that's going already. And remember, you, you can build it. How you build it really, really depends on you. If you don't want it so tall, if you're so scared of delivery, then you, know, you can just build it short and not too tall. So someone once asked me, like, how do you deliver a cake like this? Well, uh, bottom line is you have to make sure you deliver in a cake with um, air conditioned so that the sun won't come melting down your 
chocolate or i think another way to also go about it is to to put your your balls in uh, like a separate box then once you get to the um, venue or to the delivery points you can put your chocolate on it okay so i'm going to put one right here and another one here at the back So let's see how how far we've gone. Right. So I want to put one here. I mean, when you choose to stop, absolutely depend on you. Okay, so I think that's pretty nice and tall enough. But of course, like I said, if you want to keep going, you can keep going. So I'm just going to exhaust the the two balls I the two balls that I have left. So let's attach one here. And um, mm, maybe mm, so. I think it's okay, really. I think it's okay. Maybe one more here to give it that extra, extra coviness. Uh oh. oh. Okay, um, so that's about it. But of course, for areas like this where we have the joining and the white chocolate is showing, you can dissolve your um, gold dust with a little edible spirit and just paint on it. And even the joining, you can paint on it to make it look better. Of course, um, you need to be as fast as you can when you're working on something like this. So you don't want to, to leave it out for too long. So what you can just do is to leave this in the fridge until you're ready to use it but of course you know if i was working on a real cake i would have just assembled it straight on my cake so i don't have to to bother about all that okay so yeah 
So that's about it. <laughs>